Next, let's go to our test file and make sure that our contract can actually retrieve data from the Oracle. Now, in this test file, we want to deploy an Oracle contract, submit some data to it, and then we want to retrieve that data in our own sample using Teller contract. So we probably don't want to have to deploy the whole Teller system. Instead, we're going to use the Teller Playground, which is a mock Oracle, which is included in using Teller. And it just lets you easily submit data to the Oracle and retrieve data and make sure that your own contract can work with the real Teller, um, but you don't have to deal with all the overhead of the real system. So we are able to access the Teller Playground through using Teller by importing it like this. We get an ABI and a bytecode, and then we can deploy that contract in our test file, first creating a contract factory, and we input the ABI and bytecode, and then we deploy our Teller Playground. And then, once the Playground is deployed, we can deploy the sample using Teller contract. Remember, we need to input the Teller Oracle address, so in this case, we're inputting the playground which we just deployed and now we can go on to testing our contract so in the read ETH price test we are just going to submit a value and then read that value from our sample using teller contract and then we'll make sure that the value that was saved in this contract was the value that we expected so to submit a value, we're going to use this submit value function, which takes four arguments, a query ID, the ether price that we are reporting, a nonce, and the query data. So first let's generate our query data and query ID. So we need our query data in bytes. And to do that, we will use the ABI coder, which is included in the ethers.js library. So first let's encode our query data arguments and because we're using a spot price query type, we need these two arguments, the asset and the currency. So we have ETH USD. Once we have those arguments, we can encode our query data. So we input our query type, spot price, and then the encoded arguments and now we have our query data and then once we have our query data we can hash that to get our query ID so now we have two of the arguments needed for submit value and now let's generate our ether price so here let's report a price of 2000 and we need a decimal precision of 18 decimal places now we need to encode that value into bytes to report it. So again we'll use ABI coder and encode it into bytes. And now we can submit a value to the Oracle. So we just input the query ID, the value encoded into bytes, the nonce, which you can always use zero, so just use zero in your tests, and then the query data. Now, after we submit that value, we want to increase the block timestamp by 15 minutes because, remember, we included a buffer time in the sample using Teller contract. So that contract won't be able to retrieve the value we just submitted until 15 minutes have passed. So we input 15 minutes in seconds plus one second and now our contract should be able to read the ether price from the Oracle. So we'll call the read ETH price function from sample using Teller. And then let's read the saved price from sample using Teller. And then we ensure that the price that was saved is the value that we expected. And that's just a simple use case of integrating the Teller Oracle into a contract and testing that integration.